And ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome our Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency Mr. Conda Brancy, Honorable former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand. A very warm welcome to you, sir. May I request you to grace the stage with your presence, inviting His Excellency to kindly grace the stage. Also inviting to grace the stage, Mr. Ravi Segal, President, India Thai Chamber of Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome His Excellency and other dignitaries on the stage for this event. Requesting everybody to be seated and the exit doors to be closed. Namaskar and good, good evening. Honorable Chief Guest, His Excellency, Mr. Kondo Bransi, former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, our distinguished dignitaries on the stage, distinguished awardees, very special guest present with us this evening, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I have the proud privilege today in welcoming you all to the 13th International Achievers Summit 2019 on global business opportunities, which is being organized by the International Achievers Conference and IDRA. The International Achievers Conference and IDRA is mainly involved in the study, growth, and analysis of the Indian economy and the international economies. The ISC and IDRA is promoting and assisting individuals and organizations internationally in their respective fields and thereby promoting <coughs> India's national economic and social development. India is progressing at a fast pace and the economy is achieving world standards. The country is a world leader in areas such as information technology, agriculture production, steel production, textiles, and ready-made garments. Diamond and jewelry exports are some other fields. The Government of India is introducing extensive economic reforms as per the international trade requirements. The Planning Commission has selected certain areas where immediate development is required. This is being monitored personally by the Honorable Prime Minister. As a result, there is extensive economic activity and development taking place in the country. The ISC and IDRA is constantly examining and analyzing the economic activities taking place in the country and internationally. The ISC surveys various sectors of the economy to watch their performance and developments. By so doing, the ISC attempts to assist and analyze various sectors of the economy so that the pace of the development is maintained. The ISC and IDRA has set up committees to manage the various activities being undertaken from time to time. The ISC and IDRA has members from every field of economic activity. These members pool their information and resources to understand the working and direction of the Indian economy. The ISC works in close consonance with commerce and industry and government agencies to help its members in their various fields. 
The members are given facilities and services to manage and run their organizations more effectively, efficiently, and fruitfully. The IAC Nidra also rewards and awards its members for their achievements and contributions in their fields on an international level. The International Achievers Summit has delegates present from many fields from all over India and internationally who have made substantial international contributions in their respective areas. The summit will recognize and appreciate their endeavors and also make plans for future national and international economic growth. The summit on global business opportunities will highlight how individuals and organizations have contributed to international growth and development. And ladies and gentlemen, at this moment, I take the opportunity to introduce to the distinguished audience, Mr. J.L. Unyal, founder member, Idra. Let's put our hands together for him. <laughs> May I also invite and introduce to the audience, Mr. Soham Unyal, Chief Coordinator, International Achievers Conference. And ladies and gentlemen, we present before you Mr. Sohamunya. And we would also like to introduce Mr. Vijay Singh, Secretary General, Idra International. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, as is customary in India, our country, we begin any auspicious occasion by lighting the ceremonial lamp. By lighting the lamp, we invoke the gods and goddesses to guide and bless us for the success of our endeavors. And today, we would light the lamp for the success of this event and as a blessing to all our distinguished bodies. And, and ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together on this ceremonial and auspicious inauguration of the global Business Opportunities Summit, the 13th International Achievers Summit. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the proud privilege in inviting Mr. Ravi Sani, IAS, retired former Principal Officer, United Nations, to kindly do the honors of addressing the August House present here. Let's put our hands together to welcome him. His Excel Excellency, Mr. Korn de Brunsi, someone I have met many times during my UN days and admired for his for his, uh, his, his vision and his foresight to develop relations, economic relations between India and Thailand. Distinguished guests on the dais, ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful to IDEA and IEC for inviting me again to this conference and award ceremony. I recall coming here last year and I don't know how many of you were here at uh, last year's conference. It was a different situation last year. The global environment was, looked much brighter. People were optimistic. At present, the current situation, when we're talking about global business opportunities, The external environment, both globally, regionally, and also currently in India, is very, very challenging. There is a deceleration in global economic growth. There's also heightened or accelerated trade tensions growing all around the world. So this global environment or challenging environment with all of you who are here to receive the Achievers Awards, I'm sure that 
you will be able to deal with the new challenges which you are confronting in the coming year. As you see, the, uh, the forecasts for, for global trade growth are not very optimistic. The WTO, the World Trade Organization itself, has estimated that trade with growth will be perhaps 50% of what they had forecast earlier, from about 2.6% to 1.2%. At the same time, countries are beginning to increase all the trade restrictions. The WTO, which came into existence in 1995 and perhaps is now celebrating a silver jubilee, has from the very inception tried to reduce trade barriers and increase the, inter or the flow of trade between countries. But today, there's a tendency to move this vehicle of trade liberalization into the reverse gear. More and more countries today are putting up trade restrictions, tariff and non-tariff. In fact, it has been estimated that between the year two, uh, October 2018 and 2000, October 2019, the effect of barrier, trade barriers on trade globally is something in the region of $747 billion, which is significant. You also see currently the global trading environment being pushed into an area of uncertainty because of the trade war that is going on between the two largest economies in the world, the USA and China. The uncertainties created by that and the possibility of new tariffs being, barriers being imposed would affect global trade because these are the two largest economies. In fact, the IMF has estimated that if this trade barrier of uh, war between China and USA were to continue or perhaps get more uh, serious, it could affect the global economic growth by 1%, which is significant. Closer home, we have uh, countries trying to for form regional trading arrangements. You have, in our own region, a very important uh, trading arrangement spearheaded by the ASEAN countries, and currently Thailand as the chairman of the ASEAN group hosted a conference, uh, a summit of the RCEP, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. As you know, it has all the 10 ASEAN member countries, plus six, China, Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and India were our partners in this. But at the October summit, India opted out of the RCEP, primarily out of national interest that the sequencing of liberalization that was going to take place might not be in consonance with India's own priorities, and India was perhaps would be in danger of large flows of Chinese cheap goods coming into India. So India opted out of the RCEP. Hopefully, the RCEP will still move forward and promote closer economic relations among the countries of this region. And uh, perhaps at this time, I think India should also relook at what we know as BIMSTEC. If you recall, some of you who were here last year, I mentioned BIMSTEC and I had the privilege of conceptualizing BIMSTEC and taking this initiative when I was in the UN. To me, BIMSTEC offers a huge opportunity, including the literal states of the Bay of Bengal, a mix of various countries at different levels of development, which could enjoy complementarities and promote 
intra-BIMSTEC trade. Currently, BIMSTEC has, apart from the literal states of uh, the Bay of Bengal, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Thailand, also have Nepal and uh, Bhutan as its members. I would hope that more ASEAN countries would join BIMSTEC, particularly Malaysia and hopefully Indonesia, in order to make this organization more viable. I would think that if India has opted out of RCEP, India should seriously relook at its Act East policy, which the Prime Minister has uh, categorically st uh, stated and declared, and try and promote the BIMSTEC initiative. Because here I think one of the problems that India faces is that with all the countries of the RCEP, it has a negative trade, Im trade balance. India's imports from these countries are far bigger than its exports. And that fear perhaps prompted India to, to opt out of the RCEP. But I think as you all, as people in business, have, would appreciate that business cannot be done now in a, in a protected environment. Indian manufacturers must compete with global manufacturers. I know this is a difficult time in India. The, 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 the slowdown in the Indian economy is unprecedented. But yet, hopefully, with all the new initiatives that are being taken by the government and the Reserve Bank, the economy will get the right stimulus and will be able to again gain that momentum it had over these years. But as, as people in enterpri enterprises, as achievers, you have to make your goods competitive both in quality and in prices. And hopefully, you all here will spearhead this movement forward and India can once again participate effectively in global trade with confidence and in a competitive manner. So with this hope, I would like to thank you again for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for that noteworthy address. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Mr. Ravi Sauni, our year's retired former principal officer, United Nations. And we have always had the privilege of having with us her Highness Princess Isabel Lefort from France. And may I request you, Your Highness, to kindly do the honors of addressing the August House present here. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It's such a source of joy that I have been invited to meet you all tonight. I'm indeed honored for to, to see all the friends who are contributing significantly to the global economy is fulfilling. The Indian contribution to the world economic development has never been more felt than today. Indian investment in various industries are found all over the world. Indian capital, as much as Indian expertise, are most welcome, especially in developing and underdeveloped country. Of course, to say that this phenomenon exists only today would be to have a limited view of what the Indian people have given to the world. Indian influence on the international culture since centuries <coughs> have been most evident to the world religion, philosophy, cuisine, languages, dance, music, and movies. Today, though, aside from the infusion of Indian capital to the world's economy, the management skill of the Indian executive are in high demand. <coughs> One enter in a bank, Europe or in South Asia, 
the Middle East or the American, and one comes face to face with a president or a top level officer who is an Indian national or Indian descent. This wonderful reality is no limited to the financial sector. As Indian are the business process outsourcing cement, textile, chemical, pharmaceutical, and many more. Indians' operations are on the top capital to the world. Of this include Bangkok. The relation between India and the Kingdom of Thailand is ideal. Just like many countries in South Asia, Thailand has been influenced by India, especially when it comes to culture. The trade between these two countries are quite remarkable. And of course, being neighbor, they both have so much to gain by cooperating in a matter of, for security. The world today, even it has become smaller due to the technology which is responsible for easy communication and faster travel, has to deal with many issues pertaining to economy, politics, and generally the well-being of man. As the ambassador of the Human Rights of Journal Association in, in New Delhi, it is my responsibility to remind everyone of the importance of human rights, in particular in my aim to create awareness of the right of women and children who for the longest time, as history books would tell us, have been victim of all kinds of violence and violation of their basic right. Tonight, I wish to call attention to the split of women and children, even as we all succeed in our businesses, undertaking and enjoy the benefit of our diligent work, let us not forget that somewhere out there, Women and children are suffering brought about by cruelty. At the same time, I wish to applaud and celebrate to the many women who have took to their right and who are now leaders in their own community and sectors. It is because of those women that many changes have taken place and they prove that women are equal to men and they are just as capable as men to create best and work. I give you praise to all the ladies. And I said there will be, if there would be more women who will champion other women. I pray and I hope that our Indian and Thai women would continue to prove themselves worthy of respect and admiration. Finally, allow me to wish you, to each of you, a joyous end of the year 1920 and have our chance, we have our share of triumph and challenges. But what matters is to continue to move forward and achieve our goals. Let us continue to dream big and to work hard to achieve them. Thank you very much and congratulations to all of you, distinguished awardee. Thank you very much indeed, Your Highness. And we do appreciate your concern for the women and children of the world and applaud your efforts towards women achieving more and more and being successful. And ladies and gentlemen, we also have the privilege of having with us today Mr. Ravi Segal, who is the president of India Thai Chamber of Commerce. He is the third generation of Indian born in Thailand. His family migrated from Delhi and started trading in textiles. 
And now Mr. Segul has ventured into fashion designing in clothing as well as the jewelry. He obtained his master's degree in political science from one of the finest universities, the Delhi University. He has been member of India Thai Chamber of Commerce from the past 20 years and is committed to welcoming new business members and new ways of collaboration to cultivate a vibrant business opportunity and ultimately to have success together, to reap the benefits that only a dynamic business environment can provide. He is also the ex officio director with the Board of Trade Thailand. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together to welcome Mr. Ravi Segal for his address. Thank you. Uh, good evening. His Excellency, Khan Dabangsi, former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, Swadikha. At the outset, let me express my sincere appreciation for the honor has been given by the 13th International Achievers Summit and Award Ceremony organized by Jawar Unijal, right? If I'm wrong, I can, okay. Distinguished and honorable guests, Please join me to congratulate all the achievers. We are all proud of you all. As the President of India Thai Chamber of Commerce, we always support achievers. We have almost 400 companies as members, and most of them are successfully established here in Thailand. Getting something done is accomplishment, but getting something right is an achievement. And I feel that key to success is to start before you are ready. Otherwise, you will never start. Every great achievement is considered impossible, impossible at the first. But high achievements takes place in framework of high expectations. Today, if you look around the world, the most common is to see unsuccessful people with huge talent. Reason is not realizing that it's 90% of the hard work and only 10% of the talent required to achieve. I quote Winston Churchill, criticism is easy, achievement is difficult. Lastly, I will suggest the achievers to be humble, humility is sign of strength, be modest, grounded, and quietly be proud of your achievements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, sir. That was a wonderful speech. Ladies and gentlemen, we also have the privilege of having on the dais with us Dr. Bhagushri Patil, who is the Chairman and Managing Director of Rise and Shine Group of Companies, Pune, and Vice Chairperson of Dr. D.Y. Patil with their PH Pune. She has been a successful entrepreneur, educationist, and philanthropist. All this has been possible because of her sheer willpower and determination. She is very passionate about her work. Rise and Shine Biotech is an ISO 9001-2015 certified tissue culture company, which has been recognized by the Department of Biotechnology and the Directorate of Scientific and Industrial Research, Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India. The company has made and, and of course left an indelible mark in interrelated multiple segments like biotechnology, floriculture and horticulture. Dr. Patil has been empowering, fostering, and advocating for women. She believes that every woman should pursue her dreams. She has been a successful educationist, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. In the field of education, she has always emphasized the need for innovation in the system. She believes that the purpose of its education is to develop balanced growth of every aspect of a human being which is impossible without innovation. To fulfill this, 
she has worked out a plan for bringing about a paradigm shift in terms of achieving academic outcomes. Today, Dr. D.Y. Patil Vidyapeet, which is the first deemed to be university in Maharashtra, Pune, has reached the zenith. It is considered to be one of the best universities across the country and the world. The lady, Dr. Bhagishri Patil, with the invincible verb, has been instrumental in introducing and implementing many constructive and socially relevant programs in the various places and colleges and institutes of the university. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Bhagushri Patil with a warm round of applause as I request you ma'am to kindly address the August House. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, respected His Excellency, Mr. Korn Dabaransi and all the dignitaries on the stage and the excited, enthusiastic audience in front of us. It really gives immense pleasure to be here at the International Achievers Award. I'm really proud being an Indian to come here in Thailand and experience this. I thank Unyal for arranging this conference and giving us all of us an opportunity to be together. I would really say, as Princess of France has said, that women should get good, at, good opportunities. We in India, we surely have a lot of opportunities. Now Shalini Bhagat is also over here. And I've really experienced it. My passion of education was there. But as Rise and Shine, when we developed Rise and Shine, it was just an agriculture thing. And in 1996, I was just doing agriculture. And from there, that I started dreaming to form a tissue culture laboratory. And I would proudly say that Now we are really producing 40 million plants in a high-tech laboratory and nearly 800 women are working over there in our company. And it really gives me a proud feeling to work with the women. Really Indian women are really hardworking. If they get an opportunity, they can really do wonders. And I really believe that. It's only determination, dedication and devotion towards our passion. My agriculture passion turned into business, and we really export plants to nearly about 30, 30 countries all over the world. We are also tied up with a Thailand company by Kultan Orchid, who is over here. I really appreciate that Thailand people are also helping us, and we are exporting plants, and we are really doing a great work by producing tissue culture plants. Thank you once again for giving me an opportunity to be here, and I appreciate for arranging this conference. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed, ma'am. And ladies and gentlemen, for women, beauty goes hand in hand with the brains and the hard work. And today we have a very beautiful lady on the stage with us, Mrs. Universe, Mrs. Shalini Bhagat, a young entrepreneur who managed her own brand called Colors, a beauty salon now present in all our India and abroad. She has managed her two daughters and got the title of Mrs. Universe in 2019 in Mauritius. She backed the Mrs. India Earth in 2018 too. And now she's coming up in Bollywood and Tollywood movies with the beauty and acting skills with the leading producers. So let's welcome Mrs. Shalini Bhagat to address the distinguished audience. Good evening, everyone. And the biggest uh, personality on the stage. And I would like to welcome all. And today, in fact, tonight I'm here. It is a great honor to me to be here and got this opportunity. Uh, I'm Shalini Bhagat from India. And uh, just a few months, uh, just uh, two months back, I won the title of Mrs. India Universe in Mauritius, 2019. I manage my own chain of salon in Kolkata. From last 15 years, there's a huge contribution to the society from my side. And I'll not talk much, but it is a privilege to be here. And I would like to focus on woman empowerment, because in India, we as a woman, 
we have a certain level, but we have to raise our voice and we have to uh, choice our uh, we have to uh, choice our voice. And not only that, there is nothing important to make yourself stand on the society and cementing yourself. That is the main mantra of the life of our life as a woman. So it is a big privilege to me to be here. And I would like to thank uh, all of you here and have a lovely evening. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, also on the stage, we have the privilege of having with us Reverend Dr. Paratosh Kanning, who is the current Bishop of Calcutta Church of North India, who was installed as the 21st Bishop of the Diocese on 11 June 2019. Being born in a humble background, he has come a long way through his untiring humanitarian endeavors towards society and development of the youth. The bishop has been awarded with the degree of doctorate in divinity for a life dedicated to God and service to the nation and society. The Mahatma Gandhi Samman Award was present to Reverend Dr. Paratosh Kanning by NRI Welfare Society of India at House of Commons, London on 11th of October 2019. The award was presented in the recognition of his contributions and dedications to the worthy causes and achievements for keeping the flag of India high in the House of Commons in London. The ex-Prime Minister of England was the chief guest and also present were many eminent personalities including Padma Shri and Padma Bhushan awardees and many British parliamentarians. And I now have the proud privilege of inviting Reverend Dr. Paratosh Kanning to kindly do the honours of addressing the August House present here. His Excellency, um, former Prime Minister of Thailand, uh, my dear friends on dais and friends in front of me. It's my great privilege and honor to be here. And I think you all are thinking what a priest or bishop has to do with global business opportunities. Um, one answer is very uh, good, good enough for if you, if you have the, that kind of questions. From that side, two persons are there. They are from the uh, church schools, Bishop Scotton schools. Those, two, those schools were started by the Bishop of Calcutta. So at the moment, I'm chairman of uh, 54 English medium schools, 32 Bengali medium schools, and two colleges in city of Calcutta and uh, four districts of Bengal. So what church and, uh, uh, has a contribution in this uh, place? We don't go into the business. But we have developed in such a way that we organize debates with the present challenges, what Sarah was saying, the new challenges uh, even in, 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 in business side uh, India is facing. So how to overcome those challenges even the class 10, 12 uh, students, they are learning. And they are giving some new inputs. Some, those inputs may not come always to you, but if you hear their inputs, you'll be so surprised. How they are thinking, their thoughts. And the new process of uh, a developer economic status in India, how these students, though they are only 16, 18, 20, 25 years old, but how their thoughts is re enriched with the uh, uh, nurture of chart schools, you can't imagine. Along with that, that is one part how charts is, uh, uh, charge and per uh, of course per from my side, what I am doing, uh, my contribution and my charge contribution to the society on this subject. And other side, you know that uh, as he was telling that uh, India is a vast country and it's very difficult for even any governments to go to the grassroots level. It's very difficult. People may say so many things. It's not easy. Very tough. All governments, they try their level best. But church is there at the grassroots level. And you know, we have a developed, uh, we have developed a, a project called Nari Dana. 
There, we are, we are talking about women's empowerments. Even governments are, India, India government also are talking about empowerments, uh, the women's. There, the women's, they are, they are having their own products of uh, so many things they do on the sarees, on their own clothes, and so many other handworks. On international levels, standard. And they don't get that money. Of course, whatever they get money, that is maybe enough for them. But those things bought by the rich people, and they put their own uh, uh, interest on that, and they sell in foreign markets. So we are indirectly, even in the global uh, 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 status. So our contribution, charge contribution in that, and we are trying our level based so that we can produce more uh, people who have a knowledge to address on the new challenges and more new businessmen may come out from our uh, ch uh, churches and our schools. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and congratulations to all the achievers. May God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen on the stage, we also have with us Dr. Deepak Singla, who is one of the foremost astrologers in the world of astrology. It is his continuous endeavor to use astrology for improving quality of life by following the path of Vedic astrology. To his effort, he has written this book of medical astrology. Vedic astrology has an edge over medical, medical sciences as it can predict the time and future probability of the illness or accident. With this power of Vedic science, he can predict and cure diseases and remedies which are detailed in this book which today we are going to release from the stage and I would request His Excellency Mr. Conde Brancy and Princess Isabel to kindly do the honors of releasing the book of Dr. Deepak Singla, The Medical Astrology. To kindly, may I request you to kindly unwrap the book and release it. I request His Excellency to kindly release the book. And ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together on the release of this book by Dr. Singla, Medical Astrology. Discover the benefits of medical astrology and how to use it to lead a healthy life. Congratulations to you, Dr. Singla. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and privilege to have as our honorable chief guest, His Excellency, Mr. Con de Brancy, former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, here with us today. His Excellency is a well-known figure in Thailand, in Bangkok, and also is very well-known in our country, India. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce His Excellency is very much connected to India, both by religion and also his father, whose name is Arun. Am I right here, sir? And his wife is a devotee of Lord Shiva and Lord Ganesha. And also, His Excellency sings very well the Hindi old songs from Bollywood. <laughs> and on that note, I have the proud privilege in inviting His Excellency, Mr. Conde Brancy, Honorable Former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, to do the honors of addressing the August House present here. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together to welcome him. Honorable members on the stage, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, before I proceed any further with my presentation this evening, may I take this opportunity to put forward a question. Those of you who are here in Thailand for, for the first time in your life, please raise your hands. Thank you very much. I don't want to ask you why had, you had to wait so long before you come in here. <laughs> My dear friends, first of all, this is another good opportunity for me to pass on to you what I would think is a good occasion on behalf of the people of Thailand to tell you 
This is where a very good opportunities await for you. Those of you who are in the business, not only those of you who are receiving the awards this evening, but those of you who are in the business community of India, I only wish to, te I only wish to tell you that in spite of many news that we read, that we watch on television or we read on the papers. We have also heard from Excellency Mr. Ravi Soni that the trade war that is ongoing between the United States and China is a subject of interest to the people around the world. But please do not allow that kind of news to distract you from your own business destination. As a former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand, and as a former Minister of Energy, Minister of Industry, Minister of Science, Minister of Sports, Minister of Health, I would like to tell you that from my own personal experience, as a member of the Thai cabinet, covering a time span of over 20 years, I have come to a real realization that I would never allow myself to be distracted from my own agenda. I would like to pass this to you also. What is your agenda? The agenda is the success of your business. That is your agenda. The political turmoil, the political tensions between those respective governments, those respective leaders, are not your agenda. Your agenda is to achieve the successful marketing of your products, to achieve the ultimate profitability of your business. That is your agenda. And should, you should never stop to think how to pursue or expand new horizon for your own business endeavor. I'm saying this because I've been to India many times and I happen to know my country very well. My friends, many opportunities are waiting for you. Those of you who have been so successful in your accomplishment of doing business in India, and those of you who are so well successful, you don't need to export, you don't need international connectivity. Fine, congratulations. But those of you who wish to have international connectivity to enhance your business success, please think of Thailand. I'm not saying Thailand is your answer, but I'm saying Thailand is just another option that could lead you to a bigger success in your endeavor. That's what I'm saying. Do not hesitate to put forward your interest. How to do business in Thailand relating to your ongoing business in India. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost you anything just to let me know your perception and your vision how to expand your business from what you have been doing. I have brought this evening my assistant who would be very happy to receive emails from your organization, how you perceive that you or your organization can work with another entity in Thailand. You don't know whether it will be successful, but it's worth it to try. My assistant this evening is here to be able to exchange emails and whatever with all of you. This is him, Mr. Prasad. I have been to India many times representing the government of Thailand. And I have been exposed to the way business is conducted in India. I have also been informed 
first handedly, also that the top 100 companies of the world, majority of which have top executives, are from Indian origin. That is a fact of life. You have so many smart people in India. Most of the most, most advanced innovation is originated from India. I spent three days visiting my friend in Infosys in Bangalore. I realized that this is a very, this is a country where so smart people. This is what I'm going to tell you. Thailand is also rich with natural resources. If you're so rich with the natural brain power, combine that with the natural resources we have, we have in this country, I believe that we can make many, many other successful achievements jointly together. I'm saying this because personally, I don't know why, don't ask me, but it just had been a part of my life. I can say that I am the only member of the cabinet of Thailand that have been to Tirupati twice. <laughs> I'm also the only member of the leading politicians of Thailand that have read Pakava Gita. <laughs> you can ask them, you can ask ministers, you can ask prime minister, you can ask anybody in the cabinet of Thailand. No one of them, none of them has ever been to Tirupati. None of them has ever read Pakava Gita. I don't know why that motivated me, that drove me to those reading and visits. I believe you have to ask, you don't have to ask Gonda Baranzi, you have to ask the soul inside of me, why? My friends, this is the reason why I'm standing in front of you, offering my assistance to you, that if any of you wishing to pursue your endeavor with this country of Thailand, the easiest way is to send your email to me. Send your email to my assistant here. And let's see how we can develop our business together. And you are the luckiest people from India. You know why? Because the president of India, Thai Chamber of Commerce, is with us this evening. <laughs> He's my good friend here. And I believe that he would be more than happy to help you. Sure. Do he doesn't speak English to me, he speaks Thai to me. Just to show you that we are here offering our services to make your future business grow bigger and bigger. I would also like to say that we are now the government, not, not, not you, the government of Thailand the government of India has been obligated with so many commitments with these multinational agreements. Mr. Ravi Sony has already said the RCEP initiated by China, the BIMSTEC, Bangladesh, India, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Thailand Economic Cooperation, BIMSTEC. I was a part of the initiator of BIMSTEC in Thailand. I was Deputy Prime Minister that pushed forward BIMSTEC, trying to create the economic cooperation between, among us. Thailand is also obligated as a member of ASEAN. As I said, we have also many commitments and obligations that we have to adhere to. That is the duty and the obligations and responsibility of your government, of my government. But for private sector, you and me, we can have direct communication and we can develop our own business. I believe that this people to people channel has become a very successful and has become the most productive because the government to government channels 
as I said earlier. They have been obligated, committed, with so many layers of agreements. Private people to people, business to business, we can have many rooms to maneuver. And I encourage all of you to make use of this opportunity for the future, that we can be more successful together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Your Excellency, for that most wonderful and noteworthy address we had from you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's once again put our hands together for His Excellency. And now the moment we all have been looking forward to, the award presentation ceremony. And to do the honors, I would request His Excellency, Mr. Conde Brancy, Her Highness, Prince, Princess Isabel, and Mr. Ravi Sani to kindly step forward. Mr. Vijay Singh to kindly escort our esteemed guest in front of the stage to do the honors of giving away the awards. So ladies and gentlemen, the award goes to Mrs. Bhagyashri Patil, Chairperson and Managing Director, Rise and Shine Biotech Private Limited, Pune Maharashtra. Let's put our hands together for her. Congratulations to Mrs. Bhagyashree Patil and we do hope and pray that you keep up the good work and keep on doing the wonderful job that you are doing. Congratulations to you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all are aware, charity isn't always giving a donation. It's about making a difference, a difference that will last in the time yet to come. They say if you give a man an apple, it will fill his stomach for a day. But if you give him a tree, it will go a long way. This is the philosophy that this wonderful lady lives by. In the last few years, she has spent her time giving back to communities all around Thailand. Be it the sick, young or the old, the bruised, broken or the sold. She gives without remembering and receives without forgetting. So today, we would like to take this opportunity to give something back to her. And ladies and gentlemen, we do feel privileged today to honor a beautiful person like her, to honor Mrs. Shirley Sharma. Mrs. Shirley Sharma, we would like to thank you for everything you have done, for everything you are still yet to do. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for her. And of course, helping others runs in their family. We, we have always been looked after very well by her husband, Mr. Rakesh Sharma, who manages this hotel very well. Let's put our hands together for him also. And the award goes to Reverend Paritosh Canning, Bishop of Calcutta. Let's put our hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to you. Moving on, the award goes to Mr. V.C. Surendranath, proprietor, Dynamed Equipments, Chennai. His company is a leading imported orthopedic implants, instrument, and equipments distributor in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. So let's put our hands together for Mr. V.C. Surendranath. Congratulations to you, sir. And the award goes to Professor Irfan S. Mirza, Director and Principal V.M. Salagaukar Institute of International Hospitality and Education, Goa. V.M.S. IIHE is the first hospitality institute in Goa with world-class infrastructure. So let's put our hands together for Professor Irfan S. Mirza. 
And the word goes to Mr. Dharmendra Solanki, Director, EA Packaging, India Private Limited, Mumbai. The company is India's largest manufacturers and exporters of packaging bags. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Dharmendra Solanki. And the next award goes to Mr. Ronald Sylvan D. Suzuza, CEO Lexa Lighting Technologies Private Limited, Mangalore, Karnataka. The company is a leading manufacturer of auditorium stage lighting, TV studio lighting, architectural lighting, DJ and pub lighting, film lighting, highway lighting, and stadium lighting. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Ronald Sylvan D. Souza. And the award goes to Mr. Arun S.C., Director, Nightfield Engines Private Limited, Bangalore. His company is a leading outdoor power equipments importer and distributor. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Arun S.C. And the award goes to Mr. Swaroop Das, Founder and Director, Four Loop Solutions Private Limited, Durgapur, West Bengal. Four Loop Solutions Private Limited was started in Durgapur, West Bengal in the year 2010. They specialized in software product development and was acquired by a multinational giant in 2016. Today they employ 160 associates and provide business solutions to large customer base across the globe. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Swaroop Das. And the award goes to Mr. Arun Kumar, AL, CEO and Director, Spectra Technology Solutions Private Limited, Bangalore. Spectra Technology Solutions is the engineering-based company with expertise spread across different industries, breweries and spirit bottling plant, microbreweries, cosmetic, food and beverages. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Arun Kumar. And the award goes to Mr. Vijay Krishna Shreshta, Chairman and Managing Director, Toyoda Gosai, South India Private Limited, Bangalore. The company is a leading manufacturer of automobile components. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Vijay Krishna. And the award is now presented to Mr. Hiren Rathor, who is Director, Success Setu Private Limited, Rajkot, Gujarat. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Hiren Rathor. And the award goes to Mr. Manikananda Raman, President and CEO, Via Della IT Services Private Limited, Trichy. And the award goes to Mr. <clears throat> Ulaz Joshi, Director, Other Controls, India Private Limited, Pune, Maharashtra. Auto Controls India is an Indo-British joint venture initiative aimed at bringing high-quality engineering products and services to various automotive and non-automotive customers in India and abroad. And the award goes to I've never been to Pune, but I'm yes, happy yes, members both yes. jo Mr. Prakash D. Joshi, Managing Director, Shri Datta, Infratech Private Limited, Hubli, Karnataka. The company is a leading developer of real estate projects. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Prakash D. Joshi. And the next award is presented to Mr. Sabesachi Banerjee, the Managing Director, Tranistics Data Technologies Private Limited, Kolkata. 
His company is leading in the field of supply chain and logistics. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Sabisachi Banerjee. And the next award is presented to Mrs. Shalini Bhagat from Kolkata. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mrs. Shalini Bhagat. And the award goes to Mr. Shanti Bish Ahmed, Managing Director, Sensage Transportation Systems and Solutions, Private Limited, Bangalore. His company is leading in the field of design, planning, and engineering to the rail projects. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Shanti Bish Ahmed. And the award goes to Mr. Kodanda Pani Boga, Managing Director, Sovereign Estates and Multi Trades Private Limited, Mahabab Nagar, Telangana. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Kodanda Pani Boga. And the award goes to Mr. Chandrakan J. Suryavanshi, Managing Director, Green Star Irrigation and Equipments Private Limited, Jalgaon, Maharashtra. The company is leading in the field of irrigation equipments. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Chandrakan J. Suryavanshi. And the next award goes to Mr. S. Bijoy Arputharaj, Director and CEO, Phantom Digital Effects Private Limited, Chennai. Phantom F is one of the leading VFX solutions studios in India. So let's put our hands together for Mr. S. Bijoy. And the award goes to Mr. Yogesh Bajgujar. Director, Magdu E-Commerce, Private Limited, Pune, Maharashtra. His company is leading in the field of B2B and B2C products and services in the automotive e-market. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Yogesh. And the award is now presented to Mr. Jangam. Vazrakar, founder and CEO, JSK Technologies, Vijaywada, Andhra Pradesh. JSK Technologies Building Future to Inspire is a leading company in Vijaywada, founded in the year 2008. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Jangam Vazrakar. And the award goes to Dr. Pavan Kumar Sisodia. Director, SKB Multi Specialty Hospital and Trauma Center, Bilaspur, Chhattisgarh, for the field of healthcare. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dr. Pavan Kumar. And the award goes to Mr. Rajesh Yadav, CEO, RY Group, Mumbai. The company is leading in the field of interior solutions. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Rajesh Yadav. May I also request our distinguished guest, Sri Sudhakar Sangram Bhale Rauji, the senior BJP leader, to kindly join our distinguished dignitaries in giving away the awards. And the next award goes to Mr. Mahur Ali Malik, West Bengal for the field of children's education. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Mahur Ali Malik. Our distinguished dignitary, Sri Sudhakar Bhalirauji, is a three times sitting MLA of Udgir Latur, Maharashtra, from the Bhartiya Janta Party. He has constructed about 300 bedded hospital in Latur, Maharashtra for the treatment of poor and needy. The hospital is equipped with the latest instruments and machinery of international standards. Sri Sudhakar Bhalirao has always been actively dedicated towards social work. 
And the award is now goes to Mr. Santosh Barney, Chairman Maharashtra Kickboxing Association, Pune Maharashtra. And the award is now presented to Mr. Surajit Sain, proprietor, Organic Agro India, Kolkata. The company is the leading manufacturer and traders of premium quality biofertilizers and micronutrients and pesticides. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Surajit Sain. And the award goes to Dr. Sanjeev Sarpal. Managing Director, SPRN Entrepreneurs Private Limited, Gurdaspur. So let's put our hands together for Dr. Sanjeev Sarpa. And the next award goes to Mr. Sachin S. Patil, Managing Director, Sparktime Logistics Private Limited, Mumbai. His company is leading in the field of transportation. So ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Mr. Sachin S. Patil. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Sachin S. Patil. And the next award goes to Dr. Deepak Singla, the scientific and Vedic astrologer, Indian Academy of Vedic Science, Chandigarh. Dr. Singla is a well-known Vedic astrologer and of course we released his book today on medical astrology. So let's put our hands together for Dr. Deepak Singla. And the award goes to Dr. Rajendra Desai, trustee Edu Mirror Mumbai for the field of children's education. Also receiving the award along with him is Ms. Pallavi Chindarkar. So please put your hands together for Dr. Rajendra Desai and Ms. Pallavi. And the word goes to Mr. Nagraj R. Devate, Managing Partner, Advanced Diecast, Hubli, Karnataka. The company is leading in the field of high quality precision diecast components, fabricated motors, and components. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Nagraj R. Devate. The next award goes to Mr. Kesha Vagarwal, CEO Deccan Electricals Private Limited, Hyderabad. The company is a leading manufacturer of transformers and switches. So let's put our hands together for Mr. Kesha Vagarwal from Hyderabad. And the next award is presented to Dr. Hitesh and Patel, Medical Director, Live Well Hospital, Ahmedabad, Gujarat, for the field of healthcare. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dr. Hitesh and Patel. And the next award goes to Mr. Amsadgan Shahul Hamid. Director TTS Business Services Private Limited, Trichy, Tamil Nadu. The company is leading in the field of business process outsourcing. So please put your hands together for Mr. Hamid.
And ladies and gentlemen, the last but not the least, the award goes to Mr. Chintan Thakur, Mr. Rajni Bhai Thakur, Mr. Parth Shait, and Mr. Umesh Bhai Shait from Mother Nutri Foods District, Bhavnagar, Gujarat. The company is the leading manufacturer of peanut butter and peanut products. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for them. Mr. Chintan Thakur, Mr. Rajni Bhai Thakur, Mr. Parth Shait, and Mr. Umesh Bhai Shait. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, once again, put your hands together for all the distinguished awardees for receiving this very prestigious award today. And may I request all our distinguished dignitaries to kindly take their seats on the dais. As I invite uh, one of our distinguished awardees, Dr. Rajendra Desai, trustee at Mirror Mumbai, to kindly give a short speech of a minute. All dignities on the rise. And thank you very much for the founder, Nihalji. I am here, Dr. Rajendra Desai, on behalf of Eju Mira. One important point is that in this event, so many educationists are there. And the global business opportunities foundation is a better education. All we are here because of better education. And Edumirar is now developing a pre-primary foundation of education. I will tell you one story, a short bit. In 1835, 2 February, in the parliament of British, it has been told by the Karl Marx, India is the greatest country in the spiritual intelligence and education in 1835. It was decided at that time in the parliament, well, how to break the Indians, their spirituality their intelligence, their talent, then and then we can win the India. And nowadays, we are there to develop the Indian education from the basic fundamental of the pre-primary. We have got the thought that the peace of mind, peace of mind is a basic of any education. It will create tolerance and a speedy development. Our motive is that to see and to understand and therefore we have prepared the visual sound effect and all videos on the pre from the pre-primary level. And today is one specialty is also there from my Maharashtra. 
बागेश थ्री पार्टी लीज आउ सुद एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू माय प्रैक्टिकल नॉलेज इन महाराष्ट्र दे हैव गॉट अ गुड एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस बिफोर फाइव मिनिट्स अवर साइलेंट वाइस प्रेसिडेंट टोल्ड कि यस वी आर देयर टू हेल्प यू आई विल डेफिनेटली बी एश्योर that we will be there for the better education of your country with the india also thank you for nihal ji and organizer thank you very much indeed sir and congratulations to you once again and may i also invite mr surajit singh proprietor organic agro india kolkata to kindly Say a few words. May I request you, sir, to kindly keep your speech of acceptance very, very short. Good evening, honourable dignitaries on the dais and ladies and gentlemen. And congratulations, all the awardees. I am here to speak regarding a very serious matter. The thing is that environment is a major issue. internationally nowadays another major issue is coming up is the depletion of the fertility of the soil that means as per the united nations report april 2019 that another 30 years we have the fertility in the soil to produce agriculture yields that means if we do not change our process of agriculture from conventional to organic so then we have only 30 years time to produce agriculture yields as our food this is the report from united nations so on the basis of that uh, we have started long before the research work is called somebody has told from the dais that india has a great potential of innovations we have also invented some special type of organic manure that organic manure is equivalent to the convent uh, chemical fertilizers that will create a magic it is nowadays it is a global product this product is not available internationally till now as per our search when we <coughs> applied for the international patent that time we found out that this type of product is not available till now internationally that one product one product will replace the whole set of chemical fertilizers but without compromising the agriculture yield that is a major issue major invention in the science of agriculture or you can say it is the major invention in the science of integrated nutrient management science so i would like to share this information all of you from india and i am also given this information to our excellency uh, deputy uh, ex deputy prime minister of thailand thank you very much have a nice evening dr kamaljeet singh has devised a very unique method of diagnosing diseases and health issues in a person's body and over to you sir to kindly throw some more light on this i would like to convey heartiest congratulations to all the awardees winners do not do anything different they do the things in a different way you have done it congrats i would like to say that you are here to represent india so i will convey one message to you karo kuch aisa desh ka samman bad jaye karo kuch aisa tirange ki shaan bad jaye bharo pichkari teen rangon se jab kapdon pe dalo to hindustan ban jaye hindustan ban jaye thank you thank you very much indeed and now ladies and gentlemen may i request mr vijay singh secretary general adra international to kindly propose the vote of thanks ladies and gentlemen it is indeed a pleasure and honor 
to have you all here with us in Bangkok to be awarded in your respective field of work. We here at IDRA and uh, International Achievers Conference are indeed proud to have this opportunity to honor you all. You make us proud to be Indians. As we close today's event, I would like to thank all the dignitaries on the dais for attending the seminar. In particular, I would like to thank the panelists and the speakers for sharing their wisdom and expertise with us. We wish you all success in all your future endeavors and make you make India proud. We wish you all a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. God bless India and bless you all. But please go for cocktails and dinner. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much indeed. You, but ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed for cocktails and dinner, may I invite all the lady awardees for a group photograph with all our distinguished dignitaries. All the lady awardees first, please. from Global News 24-7 at Bangkok, Thailand with His Excellency Mr. Konda Bransi, the former Deputy Prime Minister of Thailand. Mr. Konda Bransi is very connected to our country. As he just told us, he has visited Tirupati twice and has also read the Bhagavad Gita. So, His Excellency, Your Excellency, I would like to ask you, what are, where do you see the chances of Indian trading with Thailand, increasing the business opportunities, India and Thailand? You know, as a official architect that had made the Thailand-India Free Trade Agreement successful, I was the prime architect of that particular program. I wish to say this to my dear friends that there are so many more, many more opportunities for us to work together. And just don't let it, don't hesitate to let me know how you wish to pursue or you expand your business horizon to Thailand. I will be very happy to give you full support. Thank you very much indeed, Your Thank Excellency. You. As ladies and gentlemen, we heard His Excellency say that he is always all out to give all support to Indians for increasing their business with Thailand. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Thank you. With Princess Isabel from France, who has graced this occasion, as a beautiful person she is, she's also all out for women entrepreneurship. So, Your Highness, how do you see India increasing trade with Thailand? I think it will be a very wonderful occasion for many Indian ladies to come and develop the trade in Thailand because we already have a natural connection between Thailand and India, a good relationship. Yes. Thank you, Your Highness. As you all heard, Her Highness is all for women entrepreneurs coming to Thailand and increasing the business opportunities here. Thank you very much indeed, Your Highness. Thank you. This is Sapna Gupta from Global News 24-7 at Bangkok, Global Now 
दोबारा खोलते हैं So this is Sapna Gupta from Global Now 24/7 at Bangkok, Thailand, with this beautiful lady Shalini Bhagat, Mrs. Universe. I would like to ask you, ma'am, what opportunities do you see of women entrepreneurs increasing business from India to Thailand? Good evening, everyone. And this is the high time for the society to. Uh, make a focus on women empowerment and i'm thinking and i'm looking forward to it and uh, nowadays society has changed their mind nowadays women are getting more opportunity at all the platform and all the uh, all the things uh, they are getting the same dignity and respect and uh, i'm looking forward to it thank you so much and busy we all know you are into this business of beauty products do you think uh, it will be a good idea for business to increase in this line of beauty products from india to thailand or thailand to india or vice versa is of course is a good opportunity for a beauty salon and for the product too thank you thank you so much this is sapna gupta global now 24/7 at bangkok thailand with the entrepreneur lady dr bhagshri patil we are indeed grateful to have you ma'am here with us and you have really achieved a lot in all the fields especially the education field would you like to say some words about it how india can be increasing business especially in the field of education between thailand yes we can make a collaboration with the thailand also we are serving the patients and we have got nearly 2000 bedded hospital we are the first one we have got a robotic surgery with da vinci fourth generation equipment and mri three tesla and we are serving the indian people at a very low cost and a good quality material thank you very much thank, thank you so much sapna gupta from global now 24/7 at bangkok thailand with chief dhakar bhale rao a senior bjp mla we would like to ask him aur aap se puchna chahenge ki aap kaise dekhte hain india aur bangkok ke beech mein business badhane ko aur trade badhane ko aap kis kis nazariye se aap pesh karna chahenge aur bhi sarhana karna chahunga ki international achu award thailand mr dr unian द्वारा पूरी भारत देश के अंदर बिजनेसमैन को सम्मानित किया जा रहा है बिजनेस को बढ़ावा देने के लिए बहुत ही बेहतरीन ऐसा कार्यक्रम थाईलैंड में हुआ बड़ी खुशी लगी कि हमारे भारत देश के सभी राज्यों से सभी बिजनेसमैन यहां पर आए उनका सम्मान किया इसके लिए मैं उनियाल जी का उनके सभी टीम का बहुत तहे दिल से मैं स्वागत करना चाहूँगा और ऐसा मौका हर समय अपने भारत में बिजनेसमैन को बढ़ावाने के लिए बहुत ही फायदेमंद रहेगा आपका भी हार्दिक धन्यवाद कि आप यहाँ पर उपस्थित हुए और सबको प्रोत्साहित किया धन्यवाद सपना गुप्ता ग्लोबल नाउ ट्वेंटी विद मिस्टर रवि सोनी so you have been here for a number of years and of course dealing with trade between india and thailand promoting it we would now ask you what do you think of the future business collaboration between thailand and india you know in thailand india is already very well established indian enterprise is reputedly known here the number of successful indian joint ventures in thailand and i always have said that indian entrepreneurship is one of the strongest in the world because it's it's been shown their success in foreign countries and if government in india has a has has a conducive policy environment indians can do extremely well and i think uh, between india and thailand they are historical ties yes go back to many centuries yes. indian entrepreneurship is very well established here and innovation has been done in india so people between india and thailand again through a framework like bimstech i have talking about where the two principal countries are india and thailand so i would hope that through this trade agreement 
India and Thailand will promote further economic relations. Thank you, sir. So he's all out for Bimstek and I created India. it. <laughs> yes, and of course he created it. So thank you very much indeed, sir. अब हैं हम श्री हिरेंद्र थौर के साथ आपसे पूछना चाहेंगे जो कि एक बिजनेस कोच भी हैं कि आप क्या अपॉर्चुनिटीज़ क्या देखते हैं आगे जो कि इंडिया से एंटरप्रेनर्स को थाईलैंड और बाकी और देशों में अपना बिजनेस फैलाने और बढ़ाने में मदद कर सकते हैं थैंक यू वेरी मच मैं देख रहा हूँ इंडस्ट्री ग्रो हो रही है और एस एम ई और सेमी कॉरपोरेट बिजनेस ओनर जिस हिसाब से आज आगे बढ़ रहे हैं यस हम काफ़ी ग्रो करेंगे और भारत को सोने की सोने की चिड़िया वापस बना के रहेंगे यस दो प्रॉब्लम से जो फेस हो रही है बिजनेस ओनर को ज़्यादा एंड वी हैव अ सोल्यूशन फॉर दैट एक तो रिक्रूटमेंट को लेकर बिकॉज people and business owners should create a very good atmosphere and environment and culture for the people uh, for the employee who are working on a managerial and leader level position so they can able to perform well and business owners are learning a lot and now they are educating themselves for the next level so i am coaching them i am mentoring them as far as culture creation and recruitment is concerned so this is what is the reason of success to private limited thank you very much you definitely doing uh, good social work towards the society and towards the business fraternity thank you very much